Hey everyone, this is Kevin with Inventamark, and today I'm going to be showing how to calibrate your thermistor. And what I have here is a little infrared thermometer, and I'm basically going to go through and show how to calibrate it so that you get an accurate temperature because every thermistor is different. And it's good to make sure that you're getting exactly the temperature that you want. Anyway, stay tuned. Hi everyone, this is Kevin with Inventamark, and today we're going to be going over how to calibrate the thermistor. This can work for either the bed or the hot end, and specifically I'm going to be going over the hot end today. The first thing you need to do is go open your firmware for your printer. This is going to be in Marlin only. This is only one that I know the software for to be able to adjust it. I'll be working on future ones later on, but for now it's only Marlin that this applies to to be able to calibrate it. Uh, but first thing you want to go to is the configuration underscore advanced dot H and this is where you need to scroll down to get to this line here and it's the show temperature ADC value and what we need to do is uncomment this and once you uncomment that it allows it to show the temperature and resistance of the thermistor in the slicing software that you use. I use Repetier Host for my slicing software, one of them anyway. Once you get this changed you need to save the firmware and then upload that to your printer to update it and once you do that you'll have Repetier and it will show once you're connected and everything it'll actually show this information down on the bottom here this is the bed for the B here and this is the hot end number one on mine and this is hot end number two I'm just going to be going over one of the hot ends for right now for this video's sake but I'm actually going to be doing both of them and I made a chart over here that shows the uh, temperatures that we're going to be working on and I'll show you how to do this uh, step by step so once you get the information going with this and you get this flow of information you want to make sure that the ACK is checked but whatever software that you use it should have a terminal that shows you the commands that are going back and forth between the printer. I really don't want errors or anything, I just want these two commands going at the same time because we need this information here. And the first thing that we need to do is turn on the hot end to I'm going to start at about 140 and that's the first temperature that I'm going to be working with so I'm going to change that to 140. I'm going to set that and that turns on the hot end. I'm going to wait for that to get the temperature. Uh, in the meantime I'm going to show what we need to do with the firmware. So we got that changed and fixed so we don't need to worry about the configuration advanced at all anymore. So what we need to look at now is the configuration.h and most of you should be familiar with this table. This is where you set the thermistor values where everything's at in your firmware for which thermistor you have. There's a bunch of different types that are already in here that are already pre-programmed with the temperatures and ohm ratings of the thermistor and down here is where the thermistor that you're going to be using is set. I'm currently using number five and that's the one that we're going to use in the thermistor tables and it just it has to be one of these numbers because we're going to be changing the information in there so all of this other side information doesn't really matter. So to go to the temperature tables is where we need to go to next. So just remember what you have the set to for the thermistor that we're going to be working on right now. So mine's set to 5. And so I want to go over here. You're going to have to scroll down really far because this is a really long list. And it's towards the bottom here. It's thermistor tables.h. And I've already scroll down to this but it's about 200th line, 200th line down. Um, it's the number 5 thermistor heater is equal to 5 and 
no matter which thermistor is set to number 5, this will affect all thermistors that are set to that number. But how this works is, say you set the thermistor, we just set it to 140, so the ohm rating should be about 260 on the, thermis on the thermistor information panel. So if we look here, mine is actually showing 260. It is at 140, and it has, is at 260. I've actually already calibrated it this but yours may differ uh, quite quite a lot because the all thermistors are different and they vary from manufacturer to manufacturer and even two of them coming off the same line can vary just a little bit but I've already calibrated mine to be close but I want to recalibrate it just so I get even more precise accuracy and so what we need to do next is actually measure the actual temperature that it's showing because this is lining up perfectly on what it's showing right now, but the actual temperature might be different. So if we go look at the temperature chart here, I have it set to the 140 because usually most filaments don't start melting till about 170. Some are a little bit lower, but most of that most people use at least 170, but I like to try to get it a little bit accurate before there. And I'm just going to go 10 degrees up for every one up until 180 and then I'm going to go in 5 degree and increments all the way up and so for each temperature here I'm going to set it to 140 and then I'm going to record what the actual temperature is and then what the ohm rating actually is so right now this is matching perfectly what the firmware says it should be but the actual temperature might be different so I'm going to go cut to me checking the temperature and seeing what that is and finding out what the ohm rating is. And I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, so it's set to 140. That's what it's reading on the display. I'm going to put this under here as close as I can, kind of move it around. Try to see if we can get the most accurate temperature we can. Just hold it on there for a while. Kind of move it and see where it's going. So the temperature I'm actually getting is 141.2. So that's pretty close, but I'm going to record that. So it's saying that it's 140 on the, the screen and it's 141.2. Was that? <laughs> the 141, I just rounded it down to 141. So it's at 141. So it's pretty close but I'm sure it's going to vary the closer I get. See now it's saying 145 so that's a little bit hot. So 145 is a little right down. Usually you want to let it sit and get to that temperature and kind of fluctuate a little bit for a couple of minutes just to make sure that you have even temperature staying where it's at. It's hard getting the exact spot where you need to be but it would actually be best if you had a like one of those multimeter temperature measurements or even just a regular thermometer that can handle that heat to like tape it on there or something that would work even better but this is what I have and it, it's pretty accurate I've worked measured things that are supposed to be as exact temperature and it seems to work good I'm just going to show a couple more degrees and then do them all and then show you towards the last ones what they're getting at. Anyway, back to me on the computer. Alright, so I got all the temperatures taken for both of my houses. So actually, I just went ahead and did both of them at the same time. Figured might as well. And so I got for the 155 at 220 ohms was the ohms down here. See right now it's at 39 degrees actually it's 40 it says here and it's 937 but that's way below anything that we have marked here so what we need to do now is take these numbers and then implement them in the Marlin firmware so I'm gonna go ahead and copy these so I gotta copy those 
go into the Marlin firmware. And this is number five, the one that I'm going to be working with. I'm actually going to comment this out and just paste it in here so I have all this information in here. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and leave everything the way it is up until 140. Then what I'm going to do from there is just actually, actually this will be easier. So we take 140, and that's 146, numlock, it helps, <laughs> 146 at 260, so all these, I already have, I've already done mine and I've already put all these numbers in, these should all match similar to what the ohms are here, but more than likely if you haven't calibrated your hot end before, they won't be the same. So I just kind of rounded these all up and kind of guessed what these would be. And now I'm just going over it again just to make sure I have precise measurements in here. So the next temperature is going to be 155 at 220. See, that's slightly different there. And just put all of these in here. So 163 at 189. 161, <clears throat> excuse me, so 161 at 170, that actually matches, that one's actually correct, and 180, it's actually 178 at 125, and the next one is going to be 194, that one's actually hotter than it should be, just kind of backwards. At 104 ohms, 85 is the next one, and 199. I actually had these in five degree increments before, but I changed it just to 10, just to because that was going to take a long time to do. I just wanted to kind of get a rough estimate here. So the next one was 208. 73 ohms and that matches 61 ohms it's actually 60 at 218 the next one was actually at 230 at 51 that one actually matched it seemed to actually be getting closer to the accurate measurements the hotter it got so 238 at 43 and then it kind of tapered off as it didn't quite get up to where it should be so 247 at 37 254 at 31 260 at 27 so I'm guessing that would probably be about 270. Or actually, it'd probably be about 265. Let's put that at 21, because I really don't need anything hotter than 250. So it's accurate up to here. Up above that, I'm not real worried about. And so to get this to work, all we need to do is save this and put it upload it to the Marlin firmware and upload it to your printer and then your temperature should be actually very accurate then and I gotta see what my second nozzle was number eight so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick time lapse on this and just fast forward it and show you the quick part of this Actually, uh, before I do that, the I copied it here, duplicated the entire thing, and then copied it over here previously. So I'll go ahead and go over this and time lapse it. Not time lapse it, speed it up.
Okay, got all that put in there. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure that these are all descending, going up. So otherwise, you'll have issues because <laughs> it, it'll really confuse the hot end and it won't know what to do. And I'm just going to double check that here. Make sure I don't have any typos where it's 1500 degrees instead of 150. That would be bad. And so I'm going to copy this, copy this into. Actually, I'm just going to overwrite this. Okay, so I've got that all saved in there. So I'm going to go save it. And I'm going to jump to me checking the temperatures after I get everything all uploaded and see where we're at. Okay, so I got everything hooked up and it's connected. So what I'm going to do is upload the firmware and see what happens. Kind of helps to have two different mega boards that I upload and just switch out, but they both work the same. One of them is actually the one that I fried and replaced the what was it, the MOSFET for the power regulator, the 5 volt one. It blew out and let the magic smoke out and ordered a new one of those and soldered it on and we're just fine after that so sometimes it's something simple like that <laughs> all right looks like it's all done I'm gonna go ahead and install it and see if we have accurate temperatures now okay so it booted up just fine I'm going to go ahead and preheat PLA on all. So it's going to go to 180 on both extruders and the bed's going to go to 70. I need to change that. The bed's going to take forever to heat up because I was calibrating that tip last night and my max temperature on that was 86 degrees. It's the hottest it'll get, but then again, it's rather huge bed so <laughs> I need to get a silicone heater I'm just using four of the standard red PCB heaters with a ATX power supply with some beefy cable on it I put the big cable on it because the other stuff was getting hot this gets slightly warm but doesn't get nearly as hot as it was before and I have printed with this. I printed the background thing there on here. I haven't posted a video of my printer actually doing anything yet. I actually got it all together and working now. I'm just going over the calibration to see what we got. So this is extruder 2. It's not quite up to temp. Getting close, it's 179 saying. Yeah, that's pretty darn close if you ask me. Okay, it's saying it's 180 now. Check it all around. It's saying 177 on that one. It's really hard to get an accurate temperature reading with this one because it's going through the air and it's you can still get pretty close 179.3 that's pretty accurate for 180 see what this one's doing that one's not quite right 163 that might be messing with it One seventy six point nine, one sixty nine. <laughs> okay, that one's way off. One seventy six point seven. That one's still off somewhat. I'm not sure why. 
Got some goop on here. That could be the reason why it's showing temperature. It's off. Not necessarily aim, aim for the nozzle though. So. I'll move it all around. 182. Okay, so it's fluctuating between 177 and 182. That's 183 that time. That one's 177. 178. So yeah, looks like it's pretty close. It's more accurate the higher the temperature you get, but that's a lot closer than it was when I first started. Because these are two different hot ends from two different many manufacturers from China. <laughs> so, and one of the thermistors wasn't working when I first got it, so I had to replace one of them with a different thermistor, and they're both wildly different. But now they're pretty close to where they need to be, and they fluctuate back and forth. Anyway, that's pretty much all I had to show on how to calibrate it. The bed says it's at 44. I don't know what it's going to be at. You can see I do an overall thing. It says at 36, but the thing says 45. It's hard to know with this thing though. Try to get straight on. 38. Supposed to be 47. So I don't know on the bed. <laughs> it's not quite working like it's The hot ends seem to be going good. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.